Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the report from Tiger Mountain. We're going to talk about the Grand Sale, Grand Sale, which is Franco Cozzo. Why is Australia selling everything to China? We have no idea. Let's find out. Welcome to the report from Tiger Mountain, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to talk about today um, why is China buying up half this country? And why is our government letting them? I mean, you know, you constantly see on Facebook and in media and all over the internet that you know, China has bought this farm and China has bought this port or China has bought this air base in Western Australia. I mean, you think, what the hell's going on here? Why is China buying half this country? You know, I mean, uh, you know, I mean, you then at the same time, you, you see reports even from the ABC, which is notoriously left wing. Um, sometimes there'll be a military intelligence report that, you know, China is a little worry apropos um, Australia's um, hegemony or he uh, influence in the 21st century and you know china is a real threat to australia and china is this and china is that at the same time we're selling half the country to to china it just doesn't make any sense i mean and this is happening at you know why we have a liberal conservative government i mean what's going on i mean why is there not more of a, an outrage about it um it just doesn't make any sense um i mean you know i know that the liberal party tends to um how would you put it um you know side with big business and side with you know if you've got the money you can buy it so i imagine there's an element of the liberal party that you know i guess if someone with uh, from china has a lot of money and i imagine they do have a lot of money because i imagine they can print whatever fucking money they want because they control their own federal reserve in china unlike us in um um, in uh, in the West here in Australia and many other Western countries. So anyway, they, they seem to have endless supply of money, so they seem to be buying an endless supply of things. I mean, you know, I just think it's wrong. I mean, I just think at this time when there's so much trouble um, brewing with China that we should be rejecting this and we need to be asking our, our questions of our government. And, you know, one of the few politicians who seems to be doing it is Pauline Hanson. Uh, Pauline Hanson seems to be, uh, and, you know, more um, credit to her. I mean, because she's a great unsung hero of the Australian people. Of course, the mainstream media, the lying press, they hate her. But Pauline Hanson's great. I mean, you know, she might not always be... You know, um, you know, like I don't know, the the, the smartest wit or whatever, or the, or the you know, or the most politically um, savvy person on the planet. But like, you know, her heart is in the right place, and she's always asking the right questions. And I think with with China, she's been doing that. And I think it's really wonderful that she's been doing it. And um, you know, and I even think it's beginning to see fruit. Um, there was talk of renationalizing the port in Darwin, I believe, that the Chinese control. Um, and this is, is, I think, you know, come from pressure from the likes of Pauline Hatton or. Pauline Hanson and also Bob Catter and other figures like that, you know, uh, you know, who actually do occasionally speak up for the Australian people. I mean, the whole Labor Party. I mean, you know, I mean, uh, I mean, I mean, Kevin Rudd, for example, speaks fluent Mandarin. I mean, the guy's probably a spy, for God's sake. There are many actual Chinese spies, I personally believe, in the Liberal and Labor government. I mean, you know, probably not that many in the Liberals, but there's bound to be one or two. And there's definitely a lot in um, in the Labor Party. Um, Penny Wong would clearly be one and many others, uh, or at least agents in the sense that they work with that agenda. So I just think we need to reject this and we need to raise this up um, as part of the national conversation. And at the moment, you know, uh, with the whole Wuhan um, virus, um, that China is in a sense sealed off. So now is the time to actually reevaluate re things at Prepo China and to, um, you know, begin to put limits on what they can buy in this country and, and maybe look at some of the things they've bought, things like airports and um, and actual like uh, seaports and renationalize these things because there's no way that the Chinese, or Chinese government or Chinese people should be owning you know, um, these kind of assets um, within Australia. I think it's part of our national interest to re-nationalize these things. I think we should be doing it. So uh, I think it's an important issue. And I wanted to raise it today um, on the report uh, from Tiger Mountain because I think it's something we need to be thinking about. So um, thank you for listening and thank you for thinking about these complex questions because Australia's hegemony in the um, 21st century, our own national interest, must come before um, the liberal desire just to sell everything, you know, because someone has a lot of money. You know, um, we can't we can't continue to uh, operate that way under the new, um, I guess, political paradigm that seems to be uh, manifesting itself in the 21st century. So that's my thoughts. Thank you for listening.